ASML, the hidden powerhouse of the AI revolution. ASML, there would be no chat GPT, no new iPhone models are so indispensable to the world's tech ecosystem. It is now Europe's most valuable company. 10 to 15 years behind ASML. In a high security laboratory in Shenzhen, hidden from public view and classified under national security, Chinese scientists have quietly built something Washington has spent over a decade trying to prevent. A prototype machine capable of producing the world's most advanced semiconductor chips. The kind that power artificial intelligence systems, next generation smartphones and modern weapon platforms that define Western military dominance. Extreme ultraviolet lithography. Only one company in the world can build it and only one supply chain controls it. According to an exclusive Reuters investigation this week, it was completed in early 2025 and is now undergoing testing. The machine is set to fill nearly an entire factory floor. It's not a concept any longer on paper. The simulation stages are also over. It's now operational. And critically, it is generating extreme ultraviolet light, a critical technology for producing advanced semiconductor chips and the single most difficult technological barrier that was standing between China and full semiconductor independence. Successful commercialization of EUV technology will over time remove China's reliance on Western supply chains. It will accelerate its AI innovation and reshape global power dynamics in technology and AI leadership. Now, the United States and its allies were long relying on their technological superiority to maintain their leadership in military, economic and AI capabilities. So this is being called by Western press as China's own Manhattan Project. It's a reference to the US nuclear bomb program that was developed in World War II. The machine was built by a team that Washington never wanted Beijing to assemble. It has former engineers from ASML the Dutch firm that holds a near total monopoly on the world's most advanced chip making tools. These engineers, many of them Chinese born, have reverse engineered the most sensitive industrial technology on earth, extreme ultraviolet lithography or what we call EUV. Now they're inside a sealed compound and they're working with each other using alias names so that no one knows who they are. For years, US officials and Western analysts believed that this moment was at least a decade away. ASML's own CEO, recently only in April, Christophe Fouquet, said that China would need many, many years to develop EUV technology. Yet the existence of this prototype suggests that China may be far closer than anticipated. This breakthrough, if fully realized, will disrupt the global semiconductor industry and redefine the balance of power in artificial intelligence development. With the United States and its allies relying on export controls to maintain their edge. Fifth generation. Today, uh, the product we ship to China are eight generation behind our INE tool, we talked about it. So we're quite far behind. And China, of course, uh, is suffering from that. They, their technology progress has slowed down. China's advancements now show that once again, American imposed restrictions fueled Chinese innovation rather than containing them. Now there is an uncomfortable paradox here at the heart of these technology sanctions that the US keeps implementing. By cutting China off from advanced tools, Washington doesn't just slow progress. What it does is it removes China's incentive to remain dependent at all on any Western technology. Now, before the restrictions, Chinese firms were relying on global supply chains and were doing incremental upgrades. After these um, sanctions were imposed, partial access became the most dangerous position for Chinese companies. The only rational response was full vertical integration, even if it meant inefficiency, duplication and enormous cost. In trying to freeze China in place, the export controls forced total mobilization. The Dutch government has put restrictions on what the company can, can sell um, and with respect to certain machine types. So really, um, the aim is to limit the development of China's chip sector. These exact fears were raised by senior officials in ASML 
when they were told to first put these restrictions in place in 2019. Now the question is how far do you push that? Do we keep them behind 5, 10, 15 years, not for me to decide? Or do we frustrate them to the point where they have no choice but to stop depending on Western technology? The same concerns that Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, has expressed on multiple occasions regarding the ban on advanced chips to China as well. China does not need to match ASML machine for machine to change the strategic equation. It only needs an EUV system that's good enough. Military processors, AI training networks, and sovereign computing systems don't require the highest yields or the smallest nodes. So what matters more is the control of the full system. So the ability to produce advanced chips without foreign permission is far more important than having the very most latest computer chip to be able to do that. And over time, of course, we would expect that China will reach that point as well. So tonight I want to break it down how China did it, why EUV is the real battlefield on that tech war front, and how this effort mirrors the United States' own Manhattan Project, and why US export controls may already be losing their power. Now to understand why this matters, you first have to understand what EUV lithography actually is and why it sits at the center of this now technological cold war. Extreme ultraviolet lithography is that process which is used to etch unimaginably small circuits into silicon wafers. Now these circuits are measured in nanometers. These are thousands of times thinner than a human hair. So imagine a strand of hair. These are a thousand times thinner. The smaller and more precise the circuits are, the more powerful, efficient and advanced the chip becomes. EUV machines work by firing lasers at molten tin droplets up to 50,000 times per second, creating a plasma which is heated to 200,000 degrees Celsius. Imagine the heat there. Now this plasma emits extreme ultraviolet light with a wavelength of just 13.5 nanometers. That light is then reflected through a series of ultra precise mirrors because EUV light cannot pass through traditional lenses. Even a single dust particle can destroy the process. Those mirrors in themselves take months to manufacture and they require atomic level precision. Only one company in the world has mastered this system end to end. ASML headquartered in Weldhoven in the Netherlands. Small country has a massive company like ASML, which is now contributing billions of dollars to its GDP. They also rely on a small network of suppliers like Germany's Carl Zeiss for the specific optical system needed. Now each EUV machine costs roughly around $250 million. They weigh around 180 tons. It's the size of a school bus, if you can imagine one. And without them, you simply can't manufacture the most advanced chips that companies like Nvidia, AMD, Apple, or those cutting edge processors which we find inside Western military systems. And that's why the United States moved early and aggressively to lock China out. So starting in 2018, Washington started pressurizing the Dutch government to block ASML from selling EUV machines to China. In 2022, under the Biden administration, those restrictions expanded dramatically. So sweeping US export controls came in that were aimed not just at cutting off EUV machines, but also they went back and they said, any further older, deeper ultraviolet systems cannot be sold. They're known as the DUV systems, can't be sold to China. Anything that's gonna help China narrow that gap of technological supremacy that the United States has. Now the strategy was quite explicit, right? They said, keep China at least one generation behind in chip making capability. So no EUV system as such has been sold to China. And yet in Shenzhen, now we know one exists. China's prototype has not yet produced working chips. That matters, of course, but it is generating EUV light, the single most complex hurdle in the entire process. 
So according to the Reuters story, the goal that's been set by Chinese authorities is to produce working chips by 2028. Although insiders are saying that they believe that 2030 is much more realistic. Now, even that timeline is going to be years earlier than what most Western analysts believe that China would be able to do. They thought it was going to take at least another decade. It took ASML over 18 years to move from a prototype model to commercial machines. However, it's not a simple apples to apple comparison, as of course, ASML built everything from scratch. Whereas China has the advantage, obviously, of having ASML designs around as reference points. And it can, of course, build on the existing global research that's available. Now, the project isn't accidental. It is the culmination of six years national campaign for a semiconductor self-sufficiency that President Xi Jinping launched at the highest levels. While China's ambitions in chips have been public for a while now, this particular EUV project was unsurprisingly conducted in deep secrecy. It's said to operate under China's central semiconductor strategy, which is being overseen by a senior person called Ding Xiaojiang. He's a close Xi confidant and head of the Communist Party's Central Science and Technology Commission. And at the center of this coordination sits Huawei. Huawei's role extends far beyond chip designs. And according to multiple sources, which the Reuters cites, the company coordinates a sprawling network of state research institutes, fabrication centers, and private firms involving thousands of engineers. Huawei scientists work across every layer of that stack, from lithography to chip architecture to final product integration. It's a race between the United States, how fast it can curtail China, and China, how fast it can make itself self-sufficient in all the layers of the supply chain when it comes to advanced chips. This is why those involved openly compare the project to the American Manhattan Project. Now, what's that? During World War II, the United States launched the Manhattan Project to build the atomic bomb before they thought Nazi Germany would. The Manhattan Project operated a mandate of absolute secrecy from Roosevelt. He said that the very existence of the project itself was to be kept secret, no one to know about it, including even some allies. It centralized talent. It poured unlimited state resources into a single technological objective. Scientists worked under compartmentalization. Many did not even know who else was in that building. Entire towns were created and erased from maps later. The US government recruited top physicists from across Europe. They exploited that wartime displacement that was happening and kept everything top secret. Knowledge was classified, communication was restricted. Disclosing the project secret was punishable by 10 years in prison or a fine of $10,000, which is equivalent to around $175,000 now. National survival, basically they saw it as justifying extraordinary measures. China's EUV effort mirrors that logic. Now, not in weaponry, of course, but in industrial power. Now, according to the Reuters sources, former ASML engineers were recruited to the Shenzhen project. They've been given false identities. They're working under aliases so that even amongst allies or colleagues, they don't even know who is who, who their real names are. They, even the people that they knew from earlier working in ASML, it is said that they've all been told they must use the new alias names. They were told explicitly that no one outside the compound knows that they're in this building and they're not supposed to tell anyone. Many recruits were recently retired engineers as well. They're chosen obviously deliberately because they possess that deep technical knowledge and have much fewer professional constraints. Others have been approached while still employed at ASML. However, European privacy laws make the tracking of these former employees very difficult. Non-disclosure agreements have proved impossible to enforce across borders. ASML has pursued legal action in the past. It won in 2019 a $845 million judgment against a former engineer who was accused of stealing trade secrets. That individual filed for bankruptcy 
and he just is living in China right now. Without these engineers, reverse engineering EUV machines would have been nearly impossible. So China's aggressively recruiting. They're signing bonuses ranging from three to five million yuan, which is around 400 to $700,000. Home purchase subsidies have been given to these people. And some of them have even been given dual nationality. They've been allowed to retain their foreign citizenship and being given Chinese passports, even though officially China bans dual nationality. Institutes like the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics have filed multiple EUV related patents in the last two years alone. China's research ecosystem has basically been mobilized at scale. Now inside the Shenzhen facility, the prototype itself reflects both progress and limitation. ASML's EUV machines are compact, only because decades of refinement allowed engineers to basically miniaturize extreme complexity. The initial Chinese version failed when they tried to do that. So what researchers have done is make the machine much larger to generate sufficient power. So the result is crude by ASML standard, but it's functional. And the biggest bottleneck remains the optics. So China's lacking access to those Zeiss grade mirrors and the domestic alternatives that it still has requires significant refinement. But even here, significant progress has been made. Researchers at the Changchun Institute of Optics have successfully integrated EUV light into the system in early this year. They've made that prototype operational. Chinese researchers are also very active in researching into alternative approaches to generating EUV light. To source the components, China has turned to secondhand markets. So older ASML machines auctioned by international banks were purchased through intermediaries. Export restricted parts from Nikon and Canon are reportedly being incorporated inside those machines. Networks of shell companies have masked the buyers. So Alibaba, for example, auction listings show that ASML equipment sold inside China as recently as October 2025. A team of roughly 100 recent university graduates focus exclusively on reverse engineering components. Now, this is industrial replication at scale. Inside Huawei, the efforts are equally intense. Engineers have been assigned to semiconductor teams and they're often set to sleep on site. Phone access has been restricted. Teams are being isolated from each other. Many do not even know the full scope of the project. It reminds you of the Manhattan Project. Men were dialing numbers on one side of the factory floor. The other side, they had no idea what was going on. So this is what state-directed technological mobilization looks like. For the United States and its allies, the implications obviously are profound. EUV was supposed to be the choke point that they were going to have sanctions put on to stop China from developing that last leg. Now, the belief was that China lacked not only the machines, but also the knowledge, the supplier ecosystem, and the institutional memory to replicate everything. We're still important human beings. That assumption, of course, is now under pressure. And once the EUV capability starts existing domestically in China, even if it's imperfect, export controls will lose their leverage. Timelines now will matter less than the overall trajectory. The real question now is not whether China will achieve semiconductor self-sufficiency, but how quickly the West adapts to a world where technological denial no longer works. Because history shows that once a capability is proven possible, it rarely remains exclusive for very long. I'm Nishma Minhas with GVS Deep Dive. Thank you for joining me today. Have a great day.